facing a civil war, an angry United States, an angry India, and a loan shark China, Iran has just signed its own death warrant. Iran, a Shia majority country that has been in deep trouble ever since the Iranian revolution of 1979 that overthrew the Shah Mohammad Reza Pahlavi regime, has made a huge blunder which could mark the beginning of Iran's fateful end. The Islamic Republic, overawed by Chinese investments worth $400 billion, has decided to spoil its centuries-old ties with India. Tehran was already crippled by American sanctions, and the latest move is only going to isolate it even further. As per recent reports, Iran has decided to drop India out of a rail line project to connect the strategically located Chabahar port to Zahedan along the Iran-Afghan border. The rail project was part of a trilateral agreement between Iran, India and Afghanistan. Originally, India was supposed to finance and construct this project. In 2016, Prime Minister Modi had visited Iran where he had signed the Chabahar Agreement with Iran's President Hassan Rouhani and Afghan President Ghani. As a part of this agreement, a memorandum of understanding was inked between the Iranian Railways and the Indian Railways Construction Limited. But now, Iran says that it will finance the project itself. The rail project was extremely crucial for both New Delhi and Kabul as it ensured connectivity between India and the landlocked, war-scarred country of Afghanistan. It is not lost on New Delhi either that Tehran has dropped New Delhi from the project in the larger backdrop of a mega-secret deal with China. Recently, it was reported that China is going to pump in humongous investments into Iran as a part of a comprehensive 25-year-long Sino-Iranian strategic partnership. Iran is hard-squeezed due to sanctions from the West and Trump's maximum pressure policy. The country therefore desperately needs investments even if it comes at the cost of becoming Beijing's client state. The possibility of China using its massive investments to influence Tehran's India policy cannot be ruled out. Top that with Indo-US ties at their historic best, and Iran is trying to arm twist India with the hope that this might reduce American pressure on itself. But more Chinese influence is only going to push the West and the US further away from Tehran, and this doesn't bode well for a troubled Iranian economy. India, on the other hand, was Iran's only key to escape Trump's anguish. In fact, the Chabahar port was one of the few projects in Iran that were able to secure a waiver from American sanctions. The US had also waived sanctions from the rail line connecting Chabahar to the Afghanistan border. The Chabahar project is important to India as it neutralizes the threat of Chinese presence in the neighboring Pakistani Gwadar port. It also gives India and its allies a land route to Afghanistan and Central Asia. This is also one of the reasons why the US sees strategic benefit in Chabahar. But Iran badly needs a rapprochement with the West and US President Donald Trump. It is New Delhi and not Beijing that can calm tempers between the West and Iran. In fact, Iran's foreign minister and career diplomat Mohammad Zarif had himself suggested that India could play a role in diffusing tensions between Washington and Tehran. He had made these remarks during the Rezina dialogue in New Delhi in January this year. Tensions were then running high between Iran and the US as the American forces had killed the powerful Iranian general Qasem Soleimani. However, if Iran allows Chinese investments to drive India out of the Shia majority country, there is really no reason why India would want to help the sanctions hit country. Allowing India to be replaced completely by China means that Iran's last opportunity to return to the mainstream stands forfeited. This is going to hurt the country in more ways than the Iranian government can imagine. Remaining insulated from the globe doesn't go down well with the younger generation in Iran. The Islamist regime of Iran might encourage hatred against the United States, but Iranians in general and the younger generations in particular want to break out of Islamic orthodoxy and adopt progressive ideas. The liberalism of pre-Iranian revolution era is something that Iranians are today nostalgic about. 
This becomes all the more visible when Muslim students in the Shia-majority country refuse to step on the American and Israeli flags intentionally placed by the Islamist regime at public places and universities. The Iranian regime therefore wants to depend completely on China but it doesn't realize that it is only going to irk the domestic population. For starters, Chinese investments are never in the form of aid programs. They are hard loans with commercial rates. Chinese companies will be given top priority in Iran like any other BRI country and before Iran will know it, it will be giving away infrastructure projects to China on a 99-year lease arrangement. Beijing wants to milk whatever remains of the Iranian economy by making it the centerpiece of Xi Jinping's flagship Belt and Road Initiative. And there is a lot of oil that China wants to extract out of Iran. Allegedly, the 25-year-long strategic partnership between the two countries will allow Beijing to buy oil from Iran at hefty discounts. The people of Iran will not welcome increasing Chinese influence with open arms. Xi Jinping's debt trap is the last thing that a sanctions-ridden Iran needs. Moreover, the orthodox sections of the Iranian population are bound to feel disillusioned with China with reports of Uyghur Muslims in concentration camps in the Xinjiang province. By pushing India out, Iran is digging its own grave. It is isolated today, and now it is also pushing away its only friend, India. This could very well mark the beginning of Iran's end.